Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel Easy Mathematics. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the problems on chromatic number. But before discussing the problems, some special rules and theorems we should recapitulate once more. So the first theorem or first rule is chromatic number of G is always less than equals to 1 plus delta G where delta G is the maximum degree of any vertex of the graph G. The second rule is chromatic number of G is greater than equals to n divided by n minus of delta G that is the small delta G where small delta G is the max minimum degree of any vertex of G where n is the number of vertices. So this is the maximum degree count for the vertices in the given graph and this is the minimum degree for the vertices in the graph. So according to the maximum and minimum we can find out the chromatic number, the threshold of chromatic number uh, accordingly. Next it is the chromatic number of G is equals to K where G should have K vertices with degree at least K minus 1. That is degree of V is greater equals to K minus 1 for K chromatic graph. That means if in a graph we will find out that the degree of the vertices are k greater than equals to k minus 1. At least that is for the k number of vertices. Then we can say the graph is k chromatic. Now one more theorem is that is the Brooks theorem. It states that chromatic number of g is less than equals to the delta g. Where delta we know that is the maximum degree of any vertex in the given graph for a connected simple graph g. Unless G is a complete graph or an odd cycle. Next, it is the Koenig's theorem. So, Koenig's theorem states that a graph G with at least one edge is two chromatic if and only if it has no circuit of odd length. So, these are the theorems which we should know previously before the solving of the problems on chromatic number chromatic number. So the first problem is find the chromatic number of the following graph. So this graph is given and we are supposed to find out the chromatic number for this one. So how to find out this one? So initially three colors are required for the vertex V1, V2, V3 of the triangle. We know if a triangle is there then to color this one we require minimum three colors. So if we consider V1, V2 and V3 this triangle, then to color this one we require three colors. So these are the three colors we put. Now we assign three distinct colors, these three here. So now since the vertex V4, so this vertex V4 is adjacent to V1 and V3, then definitely, so V4 not uh, not get the color of V1 and V3 but one more color which we provided to V2 that should be colored to V4 so that we should give the V4 as the same color as V2. Now one more vertex is left. This vertex is adjacent to V1, V3 and V4 all these three. So it is very obvious that among these three no color can be put it to the vertex B5. So we required one more color to color the vertex B5. So that one extra, the fourth color is required. So accordingly we can say that the chromatic number of this given graph is 4. This is the straightforward trial and error method. Now in the next problem we apply the theorems. So now in the second problem is find again the same type of problem find the chromatic number of the following graph so this one is a given graph and we are supposed to find out the chromatic number for this one so at first we observe the graph very carefully in this graph we should find out that each vertex having degree 3 all the vertices are of degree 3 so here from the theorem that chromatic number is always less than equals to 1 plus the maximum degree of G. So that will implies that the maximum degree here for the vertices is 3. Any vertex you may consider its degree is 3 and that is the maximum degree. That's why delta G is equals to 3. So chromatic number is either 4 or less than that. 
again the minimum degree if we consider then it is also 3 here so that from the property that chromatic number of g is greater than equals to n divided by n minus delta g it will implies that it is total number of vertices are 4 so that it is 4 divided by 4 minus 3 is equals to 4 so we will find out that the chromatic number is greater than 4 and it is less than 4 so hence both if we sum up then it will implies that the chromatic number of the graph is 4 so using this theorems we just verify that the chromatic number is 4 now the next problem in this problem the question is find the chromatic number of the following graph so this one is the given graph and we are going to find out the chromatic number so initially again we should observe the graph very carefully and we will find out that the maximum degree at first we find out so if we observe the degrees of each vertices then its degree is 3 3 3 then it is 4 then it is also 4 3 and this its degree is 1 2 3 4 so this is the highest degree so 4 is the highest degree in this graph so according to the property that chromatic number of g is less than equals to 1 plus delta g we will find out 1 plus 4 is equals to 5 that means chromatic number for this graph is at most 5 or less than 5 now since g contains odd cycle odd cycle means if we consider the triangle v2 v3 v4 then this one creating an odd cycle that means the graph contains odd cycle so if any graph contains the odd cycle then odd cycle for we required minimum three colors so that the chromatic number is definitely greater than three greater than or equals to three that means chromatic number lies in between three to five so it may be either three or four or five so now we should inspect that the chromatic number is three or four or five suppose the chromatic number of the graph g is five then g should have five vertices with degree at least four or more that we have a property but there are exactly three vertices v4 v5 and v6 of degree 4 just check v4 having the degree 6 having the degree 4 v5 having the degree 4 and v6 having the degree 4 so there are three vertices only with degree 4 that's why we will say that the chromatic number of g definitely not equals to 5 now three colors are required for the vertex v2 v3 v4 of the triangle if we consider this triangle then three colors are required to color these three vertices now in the vert if we consider the vertex v5 now then this one is adjacent to v3 and v4 so that its color should be different from this two so it can be having the color same as v2 so that this is the color now v6 vertex if we consider it is adjacent to v5 and v4 and likewise it should have the different color from v5 and v4 and let it be the same color as v3 next it is v7 if we consider this vertex then v7 is adjacent to v5 and v6 so that definitely it should put a different color from these two and it should be taken the color of v4 so v4 v7 have the same color so now one extra vertex one more vertex is left that is v1 so v1 is adjacent to v7 v2 and v6 all these three so as this is adjacent to all these three so it have definitely a different color from v7 v6 and v2 so all these three colors are used here so it should require one extra color that is the fourth color so that we can say that the chromatic number of the given graph is 4 so here is the explanation is written also so the chromatic number for this given graph is 4 so in this way we can find out the chromatic number of the given graph so one more example is there so that one is the find the chromatic number of the following graph g so now the graph is given this one here the graph has no circuit of odd length just check it if we consider the circuits like this one if this one is a circuit it having four edges 
Now, if we consider this one having a circuit, so this one is also the graph that also a circuit with the four edges. So here all the even circuits exist. That means no circuit of odd length is here. Hence, by Konig's theorem, we know that uh, the graph G is two chromatic. From the Konig's theorem, we know that if a graph having no odd circuit, then it its chromatic number is two. Hence, the proof and the chromatic number of this graph is two, which is our requirement. Next problem is find the chromatic number of the following graph. So this one is a graph given, and we are supposed to find out its chromatic number. So this graph is very obvious that no circuits are there and it is a tree. We know a tree if it is then it is the part of it is a kind of bipartite graph and its chromatic number is always 2. So the chromatic number for this type of graph is 2. One more example is given the find the chromatic number of the following graph. So this one is a given graph and its chromatic number we are supposed to find out. So in this graph we can observe that this is definitely a not a bipartite graph. As it is not a bipartite graph, so its chromatic number is neither 2 nor 1. So that we can say this is a non-null graph. Definitely, if a graph is a null graph, then only its chromatic number is 1. If it is a bipartite graph, then its chromatic number is 2. Otherwise, it is more than that. Now, it is the graph is connected and this graph, given graph is connected and its highest degree count we should find out. So for this vertices, the degree 3, 3, 3, 3 and 3. Here it is also 3, 3, 3, 3 and 3. So all the vertices having degree 3. So the maximum degree count is 3. So for all the vertices and it, for all the vertices and it is not a complete graph. The, just look at the graph carefully all the vertices having the same degree 3 but still it is not a complete graph so it will satisfies all the conditions of the Brooks theorem in Brooks theorem we know that the chromatic number of G is less than equals to the highest degree of a uh, vertex for a connected simple graph G unless G is a complete graph or an odd cycle so it is the Brooks theorem satisfying, uh, it satisfies all the conditions for the Brooks theorem. So we can say that the chromatic number of G is less equals to the uh, highest value of the degree of the highest, uh, highest degree of the given graph is equals to 3. So hence the chromatic number should be here 3 because it is not 1, not 2 and it is not more than 3 so that it is definitely 3. So the chromatic number for this graph is 3. So in this way we can find out the chromatic number of different graphs. So remember not required for all the graphs to inspect that how many colors are required. But some properties, some theorems also we can apply to find out all those um, chromatic numbers. That means if we apply all those theorems then we can have a minimizing form or minimizing solutions for all those to get the chromatic number. In this way we can find out the chromatic number. So I hope you understand what is chromatic number, what are different theorems and properties and how to solve all those problems for the chromatic number. So this that's all for this video. Have a nice day. Thank you.